If you're a fan of the Haunted Mansion, then you're in luck. In this video, I'm going to break down how one of their most iconic effects is achieved, the changing portrait. Before we get too deep, let me give a quick overview of the build. I started off by purchasing an antique picture frame, and built a light box from plywood to hold all the necessary components to create the effect. The light box was designed to rest against a wall with a slight downward taper to mimic the ride. Now that I got that out of the way, let's talk about the changing effect. This effect is achieved using two images, what I'll refer to as the static image and the effect image. In this case, the static image is the Medusa portrait, and the effect image is the Gorgon portrait. The static image is printed on a perforated scrim material. In my version, it's adhesive-backed vinyl, and is adhered to a sheet of tinted acrylic that's set into the picture frame. The effect image is printed in reverse on translucent vinyl and is aligned with a static image, but is adhered to the opposite side of the tinted acrylic sheet. The static image can be seen under normal lighting conditions, while the tinted acrylic helps to hide the effect image until it's backlit. The perforation on the static image allows for the seamless blending of the two images to complete the ghostly transformation. To the best of my knowledge, the use of a backlit image is how this effect has been achieved since the opening of the Haunted Mansion in 1969, and hasn't changed with the exception of switching over to LED lights in its 50 years of operation. For my version, I've painted the light box black and installed two small speakers on the top outside edge. I wrapped the inside edge with a few rows of adhesive-backed LED strip lights and a bit of aluminum tape to help reflect the light better. This effect, of course, wouldn't be possible without the technical side. For that, I enlisted the help of fellow maker Dellen Craven, who built a prop controller using an Arduino Nano, outfit it with an MP3 player and stereo outputs, and a means to control our LED lighting. The prop controller runs code that tells the MP3 player to play the thunder sound effect through the audio outputs, while triggering the LED strip lights to flash in a random pattern. Once the audio and lighting effects have finished, there's a pause before the program runs the effect again. If you're anything like me and not good at writing code or prototyping circuits, there are some off-the-shelf options that I'll list in the video description below. Enough on the how. Let's look at it in action. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little behind the scenes look at how Imagineering accomplished one of the most iconic effects of the Haunted Mansion. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment below. And until next time, go make something. When